Good morning and welcome to this morning's class, uh, everyone. Let's uh, begin with a word of prayer. And uh, I want to request one of the students to please lead in prayer, either here uh, on campus or online. Just pass them. Let's pray. Lord, and Holy Father, thank you, Jesus, for this morning, for this new day. Lord, I pray that everybody will study about religious authority. And in this whole day, Lord, just help us, guide us, so we will learn your word properly. And we will learn about right doctrine that you are going to tell us, Lord Jesus. I pray over Eximen, Lord, give her also your knowledge, your guidance, Lord, so she will teach us in a proper way. Lord, I give everyone in your hand. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 And thank you, Diksha. Let's uh, get back into our notes here. We saw the different kinds of authority which we have, the dimensions of authority. And then we discussed about whom or what do we have authority over. We saw that we have authority over Satan and his demons. We have authority over the works of Satan, which include sickness, uh, any kind of evil that Satan and his demons do. Uh, we also saw that nature hears the voice of the Lord. Nature heeds to the word of God. And uh, so... Even when we speak to nature, we can express our authority. So uh, these are all the areas that we have covered so far. Today we will study in detail about the strategies of Satan. Now, regarding Satan, we have already established that he is defeated, isn't it? He's already defeated. He does not have the power. But why is it that all of us are going through things where we can say that Satan is uh, causing some form of trouble in our lives. So though he is a defeated enemy, we find that there are certain strategies by which he works and uh, he still tries to attack a believer or uh, he tries to interfere in the lives of not just believers, but everyone on the earth because we've seen that he is against um, man who is created in God's image. Okay, So, because he is defeated, what do you think he would do to uh, destroy the lives of people? He does not have any weapons. So when we say that he is defeated, think of an enemy like a soldier who does not have any weapon, who does not have any protection, does not have any shield does not have any authority. So what will that kind of a person do? How will they attack us? What do you think? I know we not like war is not something we've experienced, but from your knowledge, whatever you read books, story books and things, what do you think? An enemy without weapons, if they want to attack us, what might they do? Okay, just give me some thoughts. Sorry? Yeah, they'll play with our mind because they cannot directly attack, isn't it? If they had a sword or a, a gun or something, then they can immediately destroy us. But now that they cannot do it, they'll play some games, right? Either uh, they'll make our life difficult by you know some mind games, what uh, Komal is saying, um, or they might do something in our circumstances where things which are smooth will become full of hindrances. Okay, or the worst case scenario is where the enemy will push us to destroy ourselves. That's what he can do, because directly he cannot do. But indirectly, he can do all these things. So he'll just play games to make it more and more difficult for us. And that is what we have to recognize. So uh, in, you know, in war language, they call it like uh, guerrilla tactics. 
okay so what happens is there are people who don't have any authority they don't have any resources they will come in and maybe they'll try to influence political leaders they'll try to influence uh, some of the key people in the society community maybe some young people who are passionate so what's happening they're outside but they are creating an influence and then slowly you know they can create uh, uh, hatred towards uh, the political system towards the leadership and then they can do whatever they want to do because there's a lot of strife there's a lot of conflict okay within the community so that's how this gorilla tactics works and it's the same thing as far as satan is concerned what he does is he plays by strategy okay anyone here played chess okay all of us have played chess so you know we think right we think ahead of time okay i'll do that then he might do this then you know i'll do that so that is strategy we are thinking very strategically how to get the enemy and that's how satan is he observes uh, people he observes you know each one of us and uh, he knows which which are the best moves that he can make to get us down so strategy is what uh, he works with and imagine if there's a very good enemy like uh, let's go back to the chess example okay you're playing with somebody who's not good at the game is it easy to defeat them so easy in just quickly two three moves and you're done right but it, it, if the person who's playing against you is very good then what do you do you, know, you have to think also you have to really think and maybe even think how they are thinking you have to begin to understand the enemy strategy because if you can get their strategy you can keep yourself safe it's very similar with satan okay uh, now we've already mentioned that we must not become very demon conscious or you know very uh, conscious that satan is there satan will do something it's not like that but strategy means we can understand his mindset because only if i understand his mindset i can protect myself i can protect my people okay so to that extent we need uh, that sharpness to recognize what is the devil up to what could he do what could he do in my personal life what could he do in my family so when we think like that uh, we can raise up guards or you know like a wall of protection we can pray for ourselves we can get out of certain things which are not good for us okay so that way we uh, become stronger and protected so today let's look at his tactics so a very smart enemy what would he do there are at least three tactics which are enlisted here in our notes for us first one is mind games okay mind games second one is open doors third one is violations and intrusions so don't worry we will explain each one then you will understand better first one is mind games we have seen already in second corinthians 2:11 that satan has many devices or he has many schemes plots and paul wrote to the church he said don't be ignorant or don't be um, negligent about the works of satan understand his mind games what are some of the common things that he does we have already seen earlier but now we'll repeat and maybe we will touch on a few um, thoughts give it you know a little bit more time to study and understand so blindness blindness is something that satan does and this especially happens in the case of unbelievers so unbelievers he keeps them in a place where they are kept spiritually blind they're not able to see the truth of god even when the 
gospel is preached, it's as if there is a scale, right? And they are unable to see the truth. So blindness is something that he puts on the people. It's a spiritual thing. You know, people can see, but spiritually they are not able to perceive. And that is a work of Satan. He keeps the people blind as far as the gospel is concerned. So we as believers and ministers of God, okay, I'm going to call you all ministers of God because you're going to serve the Lord. You're serving the Lord already. So as ministers of the Lord, when we uh, preach the gospel, we need to understand that it's a spiritual battle. Okay? We can't go and we can't just like fight with people and say, no, you have to accept it. It's not a like a physical battle or a social battle. It's not like that. It firstly is a spiritual battle, and which is why when there is blindness, Satan puts blindness, what should we do? We have to pray. Okay. Uh, when we pray, then God will remove that blindness. Those demonic strongholds will be broken. People's eyes will be opened. Okay. So when there is an enemy, okay, and uh, let's say the enemy is very strong, uh, and that enemy is blocking the entrance to your house, what will you first do? You'll first get that enemy down, right? Only then we can enter the house. So in the same way, especially when we are ministering the gospel and people are not able to receive it, why is that happening? Because there's like a strong man, Satan and his demons, they are keeping the people blind. So what should we do first? Get the strong man out of the way. That we can do by prayer, we can do by declaration, we can do by fasting. Do you remember we uh, spoke about that Father Nash who went and prayed and then Charles Finney's ministry was so powerful. Why did that happen? Because somebody did the spiritual battle, got rid of the demonic works, isn't it? So it's like that. We too must battle it out in prayer and then we will see that blindness will uh, be taken off of people. So blindness is something that he does. Okay? Uh, also, when it comes to our minds, we've seen the way he uh, puts a wrong thought in our mind. What is a wrong thought? What is a wrong thought? Any? Yeah, anything, uh, anything which is not in God's will. Okay, so how did how did uh, um, Satan tempt Eve? What did the what was the question that he asked Eve in the garden? Did really God say? Yeah, correct. So you see, there is a question that he poses to Eve, and he confuses her. Like, did God really say? Uh, can you really trust God? Is that the best solution? So that's his way. He'll put a thought in your mind. So then that makes us think, oh, maybe God didn't tell me everything. Maybe there's more to it. Maybe I can discover it and enjoy. Right? Uh, there is some pleasure which is being withheld from me. So how did it start? It started with many thoughts or it started with one thought? See? So that is that is what is um, so very key in our Christian walk. Okay, it sounds somewhat overwhelming that oh, every thought has to be aligned to God, but it's possible, right? When we renew our minds, I know there will be struggles. There will be times when we are tempted. There will be times when we are, um, you know, like a lot under pressure, different circumstances. We are struggling. So. All those things are there. That's the reality of life. However, we have to make a decision that no matter what I'm going through, I must make sure that all my thoughts are aligned to the word of God. And if we are confused, right? Like suppose, let's say there's a thought in my mind, I should do like this, or uh, this is what I desire. If we are not sure, we can always spend time in the word. What does the word say? Go back to the word, check the word, see, okay, is it correct? Is it scripturally right? Uh, will my life, you know, I, can I still maintain holiness and purity if I do these things, if I, you know, contemplate these things? Excuse me. 
<clears throat> so basically to ensure that the thought is aligned to the mind of god so there's a, a minister of god who made this statement i cannot afford to have even a single thought in my mind which is not in the mind of god okay so it's like that because satan knows that the battleground it's not even our circumstances it's the mind so if he can get us in the mind he got us we are already defeated right in the mind got it so that is why our thoughts are so important and we saw last time from second corinthians chapter 10 verses 4 to 5 there is a progression so initially it starts with one thought why can't it be like this why can't i do like that uh, or i want this it starts like that with a thought and then it moves to arguments where remember we said we we make up our own excuses arguments right we make up our own reasoning we say no it's fine because it's it's correct or it's good it's beneficial our own reasoning and then finally it becomes a stronghold so at the point when it is a stronghold it's very difficult to break it's very difficult to get rid of it so that's the reason we have to be careful about our thought life okay so one was blindness second is the thought area of our thoughts and of course his uh, other tactic is being deceptive okay being very deceptive or um, he is very crafty okay. meaning he'll present the lie like a truth and he'll present the truth like a lie so it's deceptive right it's it's wrong what he's saying is wrong his suggestion is wrong so deception is also another thing that we must be careful about because when we give place for deception then our thinking gets corrupted and you see everything in life flows from our thoughts so uh, imagine a person who is feeling very hopeless they are feeling like this is the end of my life i cannot do anything where is that motivation coming from it's coming from the mind that suggestion is coming from the mind so a person who's so discouraged maybe they won't do anything they won't try hard they just give up okay so that's what happens but imagine if their mind is positive something happens a crisis but they are positive and they say no i still have hope maybe i can do this maybe i can talk to so and so so the thought life what's happening the thought life is actually motivating them to uh, keep living keep living for the purpose of god so in the mind in the mind if let's say we accept a wrong ideology that uh, okay i cannot do anything or uh, i will not be successful what it does is it really corrupts our mind when we say corrupt corrupt means uh, you know when something becomes weak okay uh, it, it imagine like you know you have uh, some object of iron you have an iron pillar iron pillar uh, and it's very strong but what will happen if it is you know very uh, extensively rusted if it's very rusted and you know there are holes in it it's an iron pillar but at that point what will happen to the strength of that iron pillar it's weak isn't it so when something is rusted it becomes or in this case the iron pillar becomes weak in the same way satan knows that if our minds are not functioning well then our thinking will get corrupted he can make us weak and we always say that from the thought comes the action okay so once we are thinking something we act on it and when we keep acting or doing those things it becomes maybe a habit and habit is what is a part of our lifestyle so our lifestyle is impacted by our thinking it starts with the thinking 
how we live, it's actually starting from our thought life. So that is why the thought life is so important. Now, if the mind is renewed, well and good. But if it's not renewed, it, if it gets, let's say, corrupted, right? Uh, ungodly things, evil things, then we are actually experiencing weakness of our will, weakness in our emotions. Uh, and it's, it's affecting our behavior. It's affecting our um, lifestyle. It's affecting our relationships. It's affecting our business. It affects everything. So that is why the mind, we've got to understand, is a very important area. And even Satan knows that. He knows that's the place that he wants to attack us so that he can bring us down. So he attacks in many ways uh, as far as our mind is concerned. Uh, now, here we have a list or a table which you can look at in your notes. And it shows the various attacks of Satan and the corresponding part of the armor which we should be putting on. So when it comes to blind, blinding in our minds, we must have the helmet of salvation. So I'm, I will quickly go through this because we will come back again to these, these uh, uh, parts of the armor. So for the mind, put on the helmet. When we put the helmet, is it safe? Like, can we uh, escape even if we are in an accident? Yeah, because it's supposed to protect our uh, head. So put on the helmet, helmet of salvation. Then we, we know that another attack of the devil is he induces or he attracts us to sin or unrighteousness. So for that, what should we do? Breastplate of righteousness. If we are holding on to righteousness, then unrighteousness cannot happen through our lives. Now moving on, lies, deception, and untruth. So he speaks lies, but what has God given us? God has given us the truth of his word. So then we hold on to the truth. That's the way we battle it. Then any form of uh, uh, strife or um, discord or disunity among ourselves, that's also something that comes from Satan. But we know that God has given us the shoes of the good news of peace. So we can put on the shoes of peace, and that will help us in our um, circumstances, uh, in our ministry. Then other things like doubt, fear, anxiety, worry. For this, we can hold up the shield of faith. So thank God. God knows what are the uh, tactics of Satan. And God has given us different parts of the armor. And God says, don't worry, you can protect yourself. As long as you put it on. What if I don't put it on? Yeah, we are exposed. We are exposed. And at that time, we cannot say, why God? Why, why this? Why that? Because I exposed myself and this happened. Right? So this is how we understand. See, Satan is a very strategic enemy. And therefore, we ourselves need to understand how to deal with him. And we must not give the devil any place in our lives. So one good thing to do, one good exercise to do is to just maybe take a piece of paper. And this is for yourself. You don't have to show anyone. But you can just think about your own life. Reflect on your own life. Reflect on maybe some of the failures. Reflect on some of the weaknesses. Uh, not too much, not to make you depressed. But uh, just write it down. And you can make out. You know, wha what kind of a person you are and where are your areas of weakness? Okay, now if you were, and then just imagine, now the enemy, Satan, right? Now if Satan knows about these areas, how would he strategically work against me? What could he do to get me? Right? So, uh, why are you doing this? Because then you can actually know how to help yourself. Then you you know, hey, this I am really not good at these things. I better be careful. You know, I better escape temptation in this area. I better 
um, you know, get some counsel or better study the word and become stronger. So just an exercise for ourselves. And I think we need to do this in every season of our lives, just to understand ourselves better. Where am I constantly falling? If I'm falling, why am I constantly falling? What is it that I'm believing, uh, you know, which is making me do that? Right? So just help yourself because there is an active enemy. So before he gets you, better to understand myself and uh, prepare myself. Right? So that's how we can help uh, against the mind games of the devil. Now let's look at some open doors. Okay, Please feel free to stop me at any point to maybe ask questions or yes. Uh, yes, uh, Shani? Yeah, I don't understand in terms of when you said spiritual, uh, in terms of blindness, how can the devil put blindness on people? How does he do that? Hmm. Okay, how does he put blindness on people? I'm not too sure. Okay, let me try. Okay, this uh, scripture is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4, which says, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. So it very clearly says, the God of this age has, he has blinded. Now, my understanding is that uh, he can do this through some of the patterns of thinking. Okay, he can, he can do this by suggesting certain philosophies or certain, um, you know, beliefs which are attractive and which unbelievers would subscribe to. If you look at our own world, there are all kinds of, uh, you know, thought processes that people have, very consumerist kind of mindset. They, people also have, um, you know, very humanistic approach to things. They say, no, you don't need God. Uh, we are enough, we are sustainable. So all these patterns of thinking are in the world. Okay. So then some of these are very attractive. And when people subscribe to this, they, they are caught up in that. And even when we are speaking the truth of the gospel, they're not able to recognize. So in a way, blindness happens, right? They're not able to perceive or they're not able to receive what we are speaking to them. So that's, that's one manner. But of course, uh, spiritual blindness could also mean just plain blinding them. That you're not able, like we're speaking the gospel, but they just don't get it. I don't know if it's happened to you, but it's happened to me. Like when I've spoken to some of my friends and, you know, uh, people that I want to share the gospel with. Though we are speaking so clearly, they just don't understand. They're like, yeah, so Jesus died. How does it matter? Right? So then you're like, why can't you understand? So there is that blindness, spiritual blindness. Does is that okay, Shani? Yeah, I guess the last part that you gave an example, you explained so they don't understand how they don't explain it. Like, ah. um, yeah, I guess that's a little bit of the first part. But the, when you when you gave the example about how you explain stuff to some people, they just don't understand it. I just that you talking about the devil put blindness, but I just still don't understand how he. I guess he still does that through the mind too. If they're just not getting it. Um. Yeah. I mean, he could have a couple of couple of uh, um, processes to get to that, but we do know that he blinds people. So I shared a, a few, and then maybe there are others. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Brother Sanjay, I'll, I'll just come to you. There's a question here in the class, so let's take Just that. to add to that, uh, you know, even if, uh, for a believer, when you're just uh, uh, when we are refusing to read the Word of God, okay, or, you know, differing, that could also be exposed to, you know, the blindness of 
knowing yes. the truth and yeah yeah good uh, reflection uh, so not not engaging in the word of god right it can cause blindness and uh, very honestly my personal experience is that when you know some some seasons of our lives we reach so much we we are just so into uh, reading the word and then there are certain other seasons um when maybe we are, we get so busy and then we it's not that we are neglecting but we are not putting in that much effort uh, but frankly for me personally i i think i forget so just because earlier i used to read a lot it doesn't mean that that's going to be with me all the time i still have to put the same effort every season of my life so that i remember things clearly i'm talking about the word of god okay so then that is helpful to kind of overcome any tactic of the devil uh, yes brother sanjay please go ahead yes pastor i just wanted to share something on spiritual blindness like my own experience with spiritual blindness so Uh -huh. uh, so before i came to christ so i was into other philosophies eastern philosophies and i was into new age teachings and things like that mm. so most of eastern philosophies and new age teachings they tell us that all faiths are the same and they lead to the same direction mm. so that's that was my strong belief and so if anyone encourage me to read the bible i would say no there's no there's no need to read the bible because the bible is the same as everything else it's just it's just the same truths put in a different package and it all leads in the same direction Yes. And so so I had no inclination to even pick up the Bible and read the Bible. So mm. I was I was biblically illiterate to say. Mm. And I never thought about it. It is only through the my journey of life I know for some reason I have I mean all glory and credit to God that God was kind of whispering to me in my journey. And that's how in in a way I was drawn towards uh the, the gospel as drawn towards Christ. And when I started to read the Bible it was like scales fell off my eyes. Mm -hmm. I could see that the Bible was totally different from all the philosophies I've read over the years. There's a, there's a, I mean, there's. I would say it's like a, the 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 difference, this vast difference between the teachings of of the Bible and the other Eastern philosophies and New Age teachings that I had studied earlier. It's a lot of difference, and I realized that Christ didn't just die for Christians; He died for all of humanity, and that was something I ne I never realized, and mm -hmm. I never even realized the importance of sin. and the gravity of sin and mm. that without a savior none of us can actually uh, be reconciled with god all these truths these deep spiritual truths i only came to know when you know like the like the scales fell off my eyes and mm. my eyes were open so that i was in spiritual darkness i was in spiritual blindness before i came to christ mm. and my my journey and i would say my faith only got stronger as i continued to study scripture and uh, you know uh discuss spiritual things with other spiritual brothers and sisters in christ so i just wanted to sh uh, share that thank you thank you thank you brother thank you for sharing your own testimony um we understand that though you had exposure to jesus and what he had done you were not able to understand it or accept it but there came a point when there was a turn around and then you were able to see like as you stated i was able to see what jesus did and uh, so therefore uh, we we recognize that satan uses blindness to keep people out of knowing the truth yeah. any any other questions okay uh, divya i can hear you speaking but i can't uh, it's not clear okay um divya i am not able to hear you could you please type if you don't mind because your voice is very very unclear we will just wait for the viewer to type okay we'll just probably have her type that might be better um yes any any other questions any points for discussion just in uh, in in yeah. line with the same phrase like you know the scripture says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set, set you free, free. so not knowing the truth is like being in bondage and you know that type of blindness uh truth is you shall know the truth and the truth shall set yes. you free yes yes so yeah. not knowing the truth is something that we are in a bondage and uh, we are into that blindness 
not the, being aware of the truth or you know when it is hidden the last part i couldn't no say. not knowing the truth not or not being truth. exposed to the truth yeah is a way of you know getting into bondage and yes. a little bit of blindness yeah ignorance ignorance um you know my people perish because of lack of knowledge hosea 4:6 says so not knowing the truth is also a problem i think john 8:32 right it says you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free uh, so in the life of a believer it's so beautiful if we just track back our own lives uh, and if we track uh, one and uh, one of our struggles maybe right let me just take for example fear a uh, believer is struggling with fear and uh, he you know uh, at, at some point in their life they they are not able to do anything because they they fear they don't take steps boldly but they are committed to god's word they are committed to learning the truth of god's word and as they are journeying with god because they are exposing themselves to the word of god you know you would observe that after a period of time in that same area there is so much of liberty there is so much of freedom uh, and uh, whether or not they went to someone and whether or not they had somebody lay hands on them you find that the person is free the person is strong how did that happen you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free like even if let's say people are just coming to church right sunday after sunday they are coming listening to the word listening to the word after a while there are all kinds of changes in people's lives because the word is ministering they're being exposed to the truth the truth you know the word is working in our hearts and faith is rising so uh there is a definite change you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free and that's another reason why we have to take the truth to all parts of the world the truth of the gospel and even to equip churches and believers because a lot of believers maybe they don't know they just don't know how to be free from temptation it's so sad sometimes we come across maybe very mature believers in christ right they've been in the lord for so many years uh and in programs like this maybe they asked the, in fact one person asked a question how should i overcome temptation now they've already lived uh with the lord for many years by now they should know how to overcome temptation but they don't know because the truth of the word was probably never taught so how to help people become strong how to help people rise up to the to the potential that god has for them okay preach the truth the undiluted uncompromised truth of god and as we are doing that right day after day week after week lives are being impacted people are changing okay mindsets are changing uh, there's there's a greater a sense of um, you know purpose in people's lives so so much happens just by proclaiming the truth and that's why it's so very necessary and important okay so that's like a side thought there and uh, i'm just looking at okay uh, so there are uh, comments here in the notes no, sorry comments in the chat and lucy says uh, hearing and hearing the word of god made me enroll myself in bible college to grow spiritually in god's word okay so um, you know she wants to grow in the word of god and the bible college obviously is a good opportunity to expose us ourselves to more of god's word okay so then that also brings stability in our lives all right so um, if there are no more questions about mind games let's look at open doors how can there be open doors through which the enemy can attack us so here are a few points of entry you remember we said that we have uh, authority because we are now redeemed okay and when we say we are redeemed we belong to jesus we confess that in the last class i belong to jesus but how is it that the enemy gains entry because of the doors that we leave open so how do we leave these doors open there are a couple of um reasons given here first one of course is sin so when we engage in any form of sin 
it becomes an open door for the enemy now as believers is it possible that we we are believers okay we are believers but is it possible that we end up making some mistakes or no as believers we can never make a mistake what is what would be your take on that yeah we do yeah we can't short circuit the process we are learning we have to grow we have to develop ourselves so some mistakes do happen and um, you know certain sins knowingly or unknowingly we commit now doing things knowingly is terrible we when we know that it's not good and then we still do it that's not at all good in our spiritual walk with the lord but when the, these things happen what should we do let's say i made a mistake right by by mistake i made a mistake cuz so now what should i do i'm a believer hmm? confess yeah confess repent repent actually that word repent when we look up the biblical meaning of it 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 means making a u turn turning around so i'm looking this side now uh, but when i'm repenting i'm changing myself fully i'm looking the other side so that is true repentance repentance is more than saying i'm sorry like we can admit it that's just the first step but repentance is making a turn around full change so when we change or confess and we uh, change ourselves that is when the door actually gets shut but sin will keep the door open if i don't change then the door is always open for the enemy whenever he wants let him come and he can create a trouble so as a believer it's always good to keep short accounts with god let's say by mistake something happened whenever we are convicted holy spirit one of the thing works of the holy spirit is conviction so in our hearts the holy spirit will speak he'll say what happened is not correct this should not happen again so the moment i recognize oh i this is conviction in my heart i need to repent okay now what becomes the danger is unconfessed sin you got it so sin happens now if a believer the normal uh, process for a sincere believer is when we recognize we are convicted we confess we repent we say okay god we make a change we keep moving forward that's the normal process but when we go into this mode of you know unconfessed unrepentant mode uh, and and we just don't want to deal with it that is the big problem that will keep the door wide open for the devil and every time the holy spirit may come and say uh, you know come on it's time to change it's time to change and we are like no 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 we're just becoming harder and harder and what's happening to that access to satan access is available satan can come so and then when we don't deal with the sin we don't repent we don't receive the cleansing of the blood of jesus if we'll see later also the blood of jesus is a weapon and we know that the blood of jesus can cleanse us from every sin every unrighteousness so as a believer i need to receive from the work of the blood over my life now when i don't do these things the door is open and when something happens you know when an attack happens when the enemy uh, does something at that point if we say why is god doing this why is god not listening or why does god not see we cannot put the onus on god it's not god's fault that this is happening it's simply because of an open door and sin causes that open door okay uh, and, and so we have got to be so careful about our lifestyle we've got to be careful to overcome temptations uh, and also when we are convicted by the holy spirit to quickly deal with it and when we do that we are not letting satan come in okay uh, so that is about 
sin. Now, how does Satan um, tempt us? There are two ways. One is, or how, how does he influence us? Let me use the word influence. So there are two ways. One is he uses our own fleshly weaknesses. Okay, so then the problem is from inside. Because I may have certain fleshly weaknesses which the enemy understands and then he can work on it. And if I yield to it, it will cause me to fall. So internal issues, right? The other one is temptations. And temptations are more like external. So he can bring a suggestion, he can put a thought, uh, and uh, we kind of say yes to it. And then the you know, fall happens. So it can be both sides. It can be because of where we are at uh, in, and having a lot of weaknesses. And it can also be because externally, He's trying to influence us in a strong way. So the believer has to be ready for both of these you know, to overcome. Um, so how do we overcome? We've got to overcome by submitting to God and his word. So when the Lord speaks to our hearts, when he convicts us, immediately we've got to change. We say, OK, God, I make a change. I submit to you. So submitting to God is a very powerful way to protect ourselves. Okay, we'll, we'll discuss a few more things about submission later on. We can also work on crucifying the flesh. It isn't what, that, what the Bible says. We have to crucify the flesh. We cannot even train the flesh. You know, sometimes our uh, thought process will be like, no, I'll train my flesh. No, the Bible says flesh is evil. There's no good thing in the flesh. So the only way to deal with the flesh is crucify it. How do we crucify the flesh? Uh, sorry? Depend more on the Holy Spirit and not on your own uh, flesh okay. or self-control. Yeah, so depend more on the Holy Spirit. Fine. How do we crucify the flesh? Walk according to the Spirit. Correct. That, that's what the scripture says. So when we walk by the Spirit, we will not gratify the desires of the flesh. That's what we learn. And so I've got to walk by the Spirit. I've got to walk by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Yield to what the Word of God uh, is, is directing me to. Yield to what the Holy Spirit is directing me to. And there are many other ways, you know, when we spend time in the Word, that crucifixion of the uh, crucifying of the flesh happens. When we say no to the devil's suggestions, the crucifying of the flesh happens. When we pray, we overcome the weaknesses of our flesh. Fasting, fasting is also very powerful. When you fast and pray, then you can crucify the desires of the flesh. So these are all ways in which a believer can sort of, you know, just shut down the flesh. Then the enemy cannot win. And my flesh is dead, right? And I'm just alive to God. I'm able to live for God. So crucify the flesh. Um, that is one thing that we must learn to do. And stay on guard. Always be on guard. So, uh, how can I protect myself? That's what I need to think about. So let's go ahead. Let's take a break, 10-minute break. Let's come back. And we'll continue in the same subject. Thank you.